Ah, the Piccolina. My most favorite car in the entire game of BeamNG. It is so cute, so fantastically fun to drive, especially going through things like these Italian Alps. But there's one little problem. You can really only drive one way through the Alps. Let's say, for instance, you wanted to drive this up the Alps. It suddenly gets a lot slower. Mm. That's painstakingly slow. Full throttle. Hmm. So you know that I have done that V8 swap from the bolide, but I, should, I want to try something a little bit different and you know, not so Italian. I'm thinking a little more American. One of the things that you'll need to get up a hill is not so much like high revving, high power sort of thing. The more thing that you need to get up a hill is talk. Well, I think an American truck could do a pretty good job. Mm, it's got plenty of talk. Now, I, I, I know that the power weight is gonna be over behind the rear axle, but I reckon a lightweight chassis with a big, beefy engine like this? Oh boy, I feel that like this is actually faster than that vehicle going up these hills. This one's gonna be a challenge. Now the reason, part of the reason I should, I should say is why I picked this particular one is because the last time I did a diesel video was the drag car with the burn sign, and it was really popular and I'd always wanted to go back to it. And I always wanted to think of like, what would be the most absurd place to put it? And I think in the back of a Piccolina is pretty much where it's at. Apart from the size difference, the first struggle we're actually going to have here is the fact that these engines both don't use traditional engine mounts. And it's also got a bit of a body back here. That's going to get in the way. So if we lift this up, it is going to struggle to fit in there, but I reckon I can make a chopped out version of this and just kind of hang it over the back. Being rear engine is a bit of a problem, but that's where these wheelie bars come in. I think I can use those to stop it from completely tipping backwards and all... Uh, it, it might work. So let's start off by making a uh, diesel auto bellow. And the first things we're going to grab are the DAE that we need, the materials file, and the engine J-beam. And in here we can get rid of everything we don't need to start with, including the transmission, don't need that. And eventually we'll be left with just the essentials. Then re-export this over the stuff that we had. Next thing along here is we're gonna start looking at how we're going to mount this. We'll start by creating something out of genericness. Grab the slot, plop it in there, so we'll call upon this thing. Then we'll put the semi-engine here and make the semi-engine default and call this the semi-engine. Now what's going to happen is it's going to find this slot as the semi-engine. So this is also gonna have to change to the semi-engine mounts. For now, we'll leave the node offset set to zero just so we can see what it looks like. And ooh, semi-engine mount. Now this should just flop on the ground when we actually put it in, but... Yep, <laughs> it's working. Fantastic. I've also just realized that the fuel tank is going to be a bit of an issue. So let's grab the default fuel tank, call it a diesel fuel tank, and change gasoline to diesel. So now under fuel tank, we should have diesel fuel tank and this should work. Oh, it wants main tank left and right. Let's just go with just main tank. So now instead of trying to grab from the side ballast tanks, it should just grab from the main tank. Hey presto, would you look at that? <laughs> Fanta, now there is no transmission yet, but we'll get to that in a second. What we'll want is the Antebello transaxle. And then in the diesel area, we have the transmission, we'll place it there. And we're also gonna put in node offset, just to make sure that this node offset is always set to zero. Now, if we do something silly, like 
turn it, uh, refresh it. The engine's not in it, but it is reading that it goes through the transmission of the Autobella Piccolina, this is. And, uh, the only thing we need to do now, really, is attach the engine. And, oh, the, the, the differential transmission, the transaxle to the engine, because at the moment, it's a bit floppy. If we have a look for engine mounts, we do have some soft mounts and more soft mounts in a different version of the engine and then more soft mounts. These are not going to be strong enough. They're also only connecting to K2L and R. Where is K2? Oh, K2R and K2L. Oh, and I'm assuming the rest attaches to the transmission because the transmission itself was also mounted back here. So just a, a three point connection. I feel that that's really going to like twist it backwards. But you know what? It's fine. If we have a look for the current engine mounts, it uses EN then a number and a side, whereas the Autobello just uses E L and R. Okay, I actually have an idea. Let's go to the node section, find all of that, and then replace it with just E1R. Then go in and make everything normal. And with all of them changed over, huh? Is there any chance that this is going to connect in any sort of way? Oh, it does already! <laughs> and yeah, that, that weight is just a bit of an issue but so yeah that's that's a problem next now we're going to use that fabled node offset it's not going to move the fan that's at the front here but it is going to move everything else the fan we can move ourselves i'm thinking we're going to start by moving it three meters backwards refreshing it in here and it moved everything but the engine what the hell oh i'm an idiot because i moved it the wrong place this is the one i was meant to move backwards that's the transmission this is the engine which will be overridden by this node offset so it's fine now the transmissions are staying in the same place but this should come backwards i mean it fits kind of <laughs> what's it like to move Let, let's try that out you know <laughs> i mean with how ridiculous it is it's not the worst thing in the world good god okay that's a lot of talk we're probably going to use a different differential Okay, I also think the tires aren't really strong enough for a vehicle this heavy. And yeah, it broke the windshield. Turn that to five. There we go. That's not really like it, but you know, it's getting closer. Let's see what it's like. <laughs> oh yeah, obviously I completely forgot. I have no steering. Ugh. Oh God. Okay, let's change this rear bow. Uh, Let me try that again. The rear bumper to the wheelie bar. Damn it. Well, what if we hit ins- There we go. Now it's kind of holding it in place. So now we can steer. See problems. Oh, not quite what I had in mind. I've also noticed that the transmission is very low. I don't think the engine can actually go that low. We may have to create a custom oil pan, which is not too hard, but let's see how- Ugh. Yeah, let's do that first. So grabbing that, move it up. Grab you, move you up. Hmm. Rotate you around a little bit and basically just try to squish you up as much as possible. Then re-export it. And you know, it's doing an okay job. So let's drop this down, let's say 20 centimeters. And that is... Oh, if we bring up the nodes, it looks like our engine has, yep, already hit the ground. Great. 2L and 2R, their heights are much lower than the rest. So let's give it the same height as the others. Then these little nodes hitting the ground here and no longer, oh, what? I gave them too high of a node. Let's, let's undo that. This is the one I was meant to copy. Great. Now if we refresh, that is back. Good. It really struggles to hold on though. Now let's also rotate everything around. I could move it in the J-beam, but I think it's going to be a little bit easier to rotate 
everything here. Then, re-export. What are the chances that this lines up? Not quite. Now, there is a little bit more finagling to be done. Next, I want to start working on this bad boy. Grab base translation global, and then this should be backwards about, let's go two meters, and then raise it up about let's say 0 0.5 meters hopefully that will put the fan in the right place getting close let's add a bit of rotation in i'm thinking probably z hopefully that gives it the right orientation oh much better Next, we're going to try to cut this body out. It shouldn't be too hard to work with. We could theoretically just go in and just delete that. And I think that should work. Then call this like Autobello body chopped. Then we're going to go with the Autobello body here. And this is not going to be the Autobello body cut because that one already exists. So once again, chopped. Call this chopped. Then in here, we have the chopped body. What does it look like? Oh, well, that didn't work. That's probably because I didn't put chopped in here, because this is the part where it actually calls the mesh. Then if we do a refresh, hey, would you look at that? Something's really broken. <laughs> Let's copy this exactly, then paste it exactly. Oh, what did I? Oh, I had chopped instead of chopped. And with that, Perfecto mundo, almost. You know, actually, it's fine. Though it is breaking the real window. I would also love for this to not quite just flop down so easily. Is that moving the entire suspension? Or is it just a little bit low? I think it's just a little bit loose. I think we have some node collisions. So let's go like E3R and then E1s. So E1s and E3s. You will grab self collisions put one there put one there and one there then this one is going to be changed to false this one will stay true and this one will go false that way these ones get no collisions and these ones get no self collisions and with a little bit of a refresh Damn it, well, it's still breaking things, but it doesn't look like it's doing the jiggle problem anymore. Fantastic. Let's try connecting though, say something like these nodes to something a little bit more substantial. Then after a quick little refresh, hopefully, ooh, oh, it's actually holding up technically on its own. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. We're probably also going to have a radiator issue. I wonder, let, let's try driving it around a little bit first. <laughs> I love the fact that this thing actually drives. Oh, wow, this thing bomby knocks like crazy. I think what we need is like some super grippy rear tires compared to the front. Oh, this is fun. It's like really slow motion drifting at the moment. Oh, Jesus. This thing will go uphill like an absolute beast. Oh, God. Yeah, it really does need some good rubber on the rear. I'm surprised that this thing has not, like, got so much traction on the rear that it's really holding it in place. Isn't that the theory behind Porsches? Is you get, like, really good traction on the rear because the weight's over the rear? I mean, for cornering, you do have to be a little bit less silly than this. But, on acceleration, it shouldn't be such a bad... Oh, okay. I can see that the engine flops back and forth as well. Oh, as you can see, it's over to the side. Let's attach 2R to WB2R. Then do the same to the left side. And that at least will stop it from sliding back and forth. Oh my goodness. Would ya look at that? The engine is actually mostly holding into place. You know what we can do now? We can actually drop the engine so then it should kind of line up with that. Oh, very close. Except we're getting back into the slouching thing because the nodes are now horizontal and not vertical. So I think instead we'll attach it to E4 and go down as opposed to these going down. And start looking at putting in some wider tires than five inches wide. We do have some like really thick eight inch wide tires. So I think we'll go something like that. Okay, wheelie bar, do your best. <laughs> it feels like this could maybe have a little bit of a longer gear ratio. Really? You're still having that sort of... It? And we're still getting oil starvation? What the hell? Let's go some... 
a race dies? And let's hope that these do a little bit better. Yeah, I think we can go like a much longer gear ratio. Whoa, okay, hello. It's drift happy. Oh my God, is it drift happy? Jesus. What sort of different, we can go to a, like a 3.8. I think that will do for now. Our engine is doing that starving of oil issue again. But now that we're in a higher diff ratio, we are getting more use out of our gears. But still, Jesus Christ. Not gonna lie, I think the engine is probably most of the vehicle's weight at the moment. So I suppose it kind of makes sense, but God damn. I think we could still use even a longer diff ratio for this. Oh God. We do have a race and then we can go all the way down to two to one. And with, whoa, that's feeling a lot better with that diff ratio. Oh, good golly, Miss Molly. This thing is ripping. Uh, I feel that we need even a longer diff ratio though. Nope. Okay, next thing we'll want to do is get some piping to the intake. So let's grab you, let's grab you, and rotate like this. Then let's add some geometry to this. Make it nice and low poly. Convert it to a, to the, to a mesh. Wait, what? Mesh. Then we probably want to have it have this sort of material and it lays along here. So we need to get this to line up with that. It's not going to be the easiest thing to do, but it also doesn't need to be exactly perfect. Then join it with the engine and export. Please work nicely for daddy. Close enough. Let's see how this does against a normal drag vehicle. I, mean, I gotta be honest, I don't like my chances, but we'll give it a shot in the leg, eh? Okay, we're at the line. Come on, Rome. Yes! Come on! Oh my god, nope, okay. I thought I was fast, but apparently not that far. Okay. Lightness wins the day. That's all it is. Just lightness. Gonna be honest, didn't expect him to be quite so fast. I feel that we just, we've got too much torque. Oh God, please no. Why must you be like this? But I just want to take it like sensibly down and see what sort of time we do. If we get less than 10 seconds, I'll be astonished. Over 10 seconds, I'll be disappointed. Oh God, no, no, oh, come on. I've already gone out of my lane. Let's see. Race rear torsion bars. Race rear coilovers. Fantastic. That will help us be a little bit more stable. But we don't have an anti-roll bar. Weird. That's um concerning. But it might help us stay a little bit more stable than what we currently are. Okay, there we go. And quarter mile started. That's a lot of wheel spin. Still wheel spinning. Still wheel spinning. Oh, come on. Oh, this is close to undrivable. We're still in first gear. Ah, no. Oh, God. God went out of my lane. This is a little bit of tuning here. Uh, fully pressured front tires, softer rear tires, toe adjust rear. Uh, toe in is 42%. Let's give it like a hundred percent toe in front to adjust. Uh, hopefully that's towing us in. Let's try that out. It does feel a little bit more stable, but not great. But oh, then it's uh, like, it's just unstable at this point. I can't anything over 40 kilometers an hour. And this thing becomes a complete death trap. Oh, come on, 90. Uh, so close. Just across the line. No, <laughs> I was right there. 20 minutes later. I gave up. So I kind of cheated. Notice that the front bumper looks like it's kind of pulling the vehicle down. Well, that's because this is usually 0.5 of a kilo and now it's 50 kilos. So my front bumper now is a hundred times heavier. As a result, I did call it ballast, but with very, very careful driving, you can at least 
Make it down the drag strip. Okay. Gotta be very careful. Full sweat mode. But we can do this because weight is not really an issue. It's more aerodynamics than just general dynamics. Wow. Yeah, it's still not perfect. Oh, God. It also won't go into reverse on its own, which is weird. So I have to control that manually when I wanted to do that. This time, I think I'm going to put it up against like a T-series. I don't know if I'm going to be... I should be able to beat them. I should have a much better gear ratio than they do. But we will have to wait and see. There we go. We're on the line. Then with identical engines. Oh, he got the jump on us. Probably because he's got the better gear ratio and probably, I'm guessing, a better turbo. Because I'm still only using the base turbo because this thing just absolutely rips and please be less than 17 seconds damn that's not a good time let's see how we go against just a normal order bella pecolina and pickles away okay you know what nah <laughs> i thought i had something going here seems that no Oh my god, that, that's like the 1300cc one. It's not even that big. I can't believe this is that much slower. Are you kidding me? Oh, I'm catching on them. I'm catching on them. Oh, really? Let's change to a bigger turbo, maybe. Nothing could go wrong. Okay, really? Still again? God, that little fella rips. It's only, as I said, a 1300. Oh, come on. Bugger. So... Not gonna lie, is turned out a little bit worse than what I thought. It's not completely atrocious, but, you know, it's not really anywhere near good enough to, like, oh god, it's just, it's so bad. I, I'm going so slow, I'm not even really putting on the throttle, and it's just wheel spinning like crazy. I thought this was gonna help me get up hills, but, oh just look at it go around but it struggles so much how does it struggle so much there should be so much pressure on that rear set of tires like even with the wheelie bar there this shouldn't be having this much of an issue good god so sometimes you just have to try things out to know whether they will work or not and I mean, to be honest, I should have known. But now, instead of saying, that's a stupid idea, that'll never work, you can confidently say, no, it most certainly does not work. Because you can look at it, and you know what? It'll be on the repository, so you can tell people, hey, don't need to do that stupid thing, it's already been done, and it doesn't work. Uh, you know what? If you want to early access to this, it will be up on the Beam and G, uh, sorry, the, my Patreon, which is linked in the description, uh, if you wanted early access to that. Everything goes up for free on the repository it's just if you have a little bit of money actually I, i've not charged a little amount of money uh and you want to support me in that way as well you can go ahead and do that and you'll get early access that's the perks there but for now though i would like to thank my channel members and that specifically includes the rogue tick the crayon priest for being a top tier channel member for the rest of you though i hope you have liked and subscribed but for now i'll catch you all later goodbye